I'm Myron Metcalf with the Marianne Key Book Club, joined as always by Lindsay Pfeiffer, uh, who is with the NEA, NEA Cape Department, uh, AAPI Outreach and Engagement, uh, here for our final conversation about minor feelings. This incredible book, the second book for the Marianne Key Book Club, our panel Tuesday, November 2nd, seven o'clock. You can register through Hennepin County Libraries. So we're excited for that. Uh, Lindsay, in this final chapter, The Indebted. Uh, there's just so much to unpack, but I thought one of the most profound things, she talked about what indebtedness meant to her. She talks about being born as a daughter rather than a son. She talks about the weight of, you know, carrying on the family history and name. And then she says, which I thought maybe was more one of the more profound things on page 185, indebtedness is not the same thing as gratitude. What did you take from that passage and also just her perspective on indebtedness and how that shaped her as an individual. Yeah, I really um, felt a lot about or thought a lot about this idea of indebtedness. Um, and she also on that same page 185, she said, being indebted is to be cautious, inhibited, and to never speak out of turn. It is to lead a life constrained by choices that are never your own. And so I started thinking about that in terms of for all of us, right? So when are we not claiming our space? When are we not uh, um, allowed a voice because we are indebted to you know, X, Y, and Z, to the histories um, that we come from? And so if each of us are indebted, how does that not only constrain our voices and then thus our future choices, but also how is it preventing us from being who we are and therefore able to be an ally and able to be a co-conspirator and able to, able to be in solidarity with other people, right? If you're always indebted to something and someone. And this idea that she talks about in this, in this book about that and feeling that weight um, and having to be quiet in spaces, I hope that we can learn from that, right? And take something really like a strong lesson from that that says, we don't have to be indebted to our histories, right? We can learn from them and they can shape us and they of course shape us, but we get to be who we are and, and, and change that for future generations. We can't live in the space of being indebted and just constantly being quiet. I think that was a really strong feeling for me um, because on page 186, she says to be indebted is to fixate on the future. Um, and so how do we do that and still step into our own space and our own power? Um, so I thought that was really uh, just like a, such a profound idea of like, we are all indebted. How does that inform who we are and how we show up for people? Um, and I also feel like I said I was going to um, put the recording on and then I forgot to do it. Um, I'm sorry. So um, I... Um, also wanted to talk about um, this idea on page um, 182 in terms of like, if we're, she's talking about the public pools, right? And her own experience with the public pools um, and that the public pool is such a stark example of how much this country has been hell bent on keeping black and white bodies apart that I became unsure if it was my history to retell. So if we are indebted to our past and to our histories, then where, how are we able to have space? And I feel like there's definitely a feeling in places that the AAPI voice and struggle hasn't been, we don't have the historical context that we actually do, right? We're supposed to stay in our lane. We, we're not supposed to be in this conversation. And in fact, we, we belong here. We have had long history, right? And I love the idea that she's bringing that um, up in this book, right? And so that I think is also on page 188, a really good lesson to learn. Um, and this idea when she's talking about Kochiyama, um, finally had a vocabulary, a historical context. What had happened to her wasn't a nightmarish aberration, but the norm. And so I hope that this book, like the takeaway, one hope that I have is that this book gives everyone a vocabulary, a historical context, where we're, we're understanding that the AAPI experience has a long history in this culture and in this country, I should say, and that if there's one ask that I would have for people is that we would 
ask everybody to just choose one person or one event and research it, look into it, you know, familiarize it with, with, uh, familiarize yourself with it and then share it, right? Drop it in conversations. Um, even if it's like not subtle and you're like, here's my, you know, history lesson for today and just be willing and open to look, to sharing what we learn. Because the more we talk about that and the more we normalize the fact that the AAPI community has a long history and the AAPI history is American history, right? Like I hope that we can then be, make this like embed this into the collective unconscious that we are all here together we can learn from each other and that history is important but we're and we're maybe indebted to learn from it and learn lessons from it um, but we don't have to have that be constraints for who we are and how we move forward in the future i love that um and i think that's why i'm so excited about this panel and you moderating I, i've had to learn myself that you know sometimes people need some grace right like there are times i would think if people didn't know basic elements of black history i'd be like well how do you not know and now i'm more inclined to say well hey here's a book you should read or here's a story you should read because i think we all need a starting point and i would encourage people to embrace that you know uh, i'd rather you have a starting point than ignorance when it comes to history and i thought all about i thought a lot about that in reading this last chapter i know we don't have much time but my starting point in terms of understanding who I was as an African-American was visiting the gravesite of Mary Ann Key, who this book club is named after. And that was sort of point one for me. Wow, I have a place where I know I began. And what I love about this chapter in Minor Feelings is it talks about the vast origin of a community that spans across this globe and that has to you know, reckon with a history both here in this country, but also in other places. What did you take away from her description of that reality uh, within the AAPI community and its significance uh, in that journey? There's so much to talk about. Like, we'll just never have enough time. Like, I'm we'll never. saying that. We need <laughs> bonus episode. We need like a bonus episode. Yes, because, you know, as a, as a Korean woman, and I'm reading this, at this book by a Korean writer, Korean American writer, I just think, what she's talking about and all of those things about South Korea and history is so um, important. And I don't know if that's taught anywhere, right? In, in education and in schools and um, the idea of how much influence that um, the US troops have on Korean culture today, how much influence it, it she talks about how um, in here that Seoul is not a safe place for women and the reasons why, right? And the Western ideals and this idea that, um, you know, so much plastic surgery is just normalized in South Korea because of a certain idea of beauty that's been Westernized, right? So 20% uh, of um, the Korean population has had eye surgery to make their eye look more Western and less Asian. Those things, um, you know, like that, those those things are so important to, to know about and like the history of, of US interaction with Asia and also Asians and Pacific Islanders, our history here. Um, and I really like how you're saying that there, it's just, it's, there's never enough time to talk about it in these conversations because it is so diverse, it's so broad. And so she gives us specific examples based on you know being a Korean woman and going to Korea. And there's just so much more that we can learn and, and talk about. And, and, and that's really what I'm hoping that people will say, I didn't know about this and I'm gonna learn about this. And, um, and, and there's like where I, you ask like where there's a starting point. And I feel like, you know, like that's the beauty of these books, right? We have a starting point and a place to start our conversation and that that might lead us to, you know, X, Y, Z. And, um, and our conversation on Tuesday, this next Tuesday with the panel, I am really excited about it because even in our conversations that we've had so far, there's so many things that we could be talking about. And I, I'm really excited about how these three experts are going to explore those ideas. Well, I can't wait and looking forward to it. I think people are going to learn a lot. Tune in, register through Hennepin County Library's website with the Marianne Key Book Club. We will see you all on November the 2nd.